What's going on you guys? My name's Ty Knotts and welcome to Top 5 Unknowns. 5 people killed by someone secretly living in their home. Number 5 in early 2005, Jeffrey Freeman, a man from Tennessee, was found to have passed away in his apartment with his wife waiting a total of 16 hours after his passing to inform police. When they arrived, it was found out that Jeffrey had been strangled and then beaten to death, with his body being left face down on the bathroom floor. When authorities questioned his wife about what had happened, she revealed that her lover, an illegal immigrant, had taken the man's life. She then led officers to a two-foot by eight-foot closet where the man named Perez had allegedly been living. In the closet, they found a foam pad, a few loaves of bread, and a Game Boy, with Martha, Jeffrey's wife, stating that her lover had been living in the closet for a little over a month. She then continued on to tell police that late in the evening, her husband became suspicious of the closet, in which Perez had been living, and opened it up. It was then that Jeffrey discovered Perez, and a fight immediately began. However, this fight didn't last long, as within moments, Perez allegedly had Jeffrey bound in the bathroom where a scuffle was heard by Martha, with Perez emerging without Jeffrey just a few minutes later. After this, both Martha and Perez went about their days as usual, without calling police to the scene until later that night. At trial, it was then made painfully obvious that the attack on Jeffrey was not due to sheer coincidence of Perez being discovered. Rather, it appeared as though Perez and Martha had conspired against her husband, and each of them played a part in his passing. This was later proved to be true, and in September, of 2006, both Martha and Perez were sentenced to life in prison. Number 4 Theodore Konies, also known as the Denver Spider-Man, was a man born in the late 1880s who was told by doctors that he wouldn't live to see his 18th birthday, due to a series of health issues. Because of this, Theodore dropped out of high school and began work as a bookkeeper at a small local business. Following this, he spent the majority of his adult life homeless, living off of handouts from locals. This continued until Theodore was about 59 years old, shattering the expectations of his previous doctors. In September of 1941, Theodore returned to the home of an old friend named Philip Peters, though found that he wasn't home. Rather than waiting for his return, Theodore went inside Philip's house to find something to eat. Afterward, he wandered around the home and found a small opening in the ceiling of a closet that led to Philip's attic. He went inside and remained there for the next five weeks. One day, as Theodore left the attic in search of food, Philip caught him and a fight ensued. Philip was then bludgeoned by Theodore, with his body being found later on that day by a neighbor. When police arrived to investigate the home, they found no trace of anyone who may have broken in, even noting that all the doors had been locked from the inside. So they cleaned the area and left the home vacant. Weeks went by with the home remaining in this state, until July of 1942 when police returned to the home for routine checks to ensure that it wasn't being vandalized. It was then that they caught a glimpse of Theodore in the upstairs portion of the home, and caught him just as his leg was disappearing through the attic cubbyhole in the top of the closet. They pulled him down and arrested him, later charging him for taking the life of Philip. Theodore was then sentenced to life in prison, which he carried out until his passing in 1967. Number 3 in June of 1936, a man by the name of Tracy Wright, a worker at a local grocery store, was fired after he was found to have been stealing from the business on numerous occasions. Just a few months after losing his job, Tracy became homeless and incurred numerous run-ins with the law, involving theft, assault, and public intoxication. In October of 1936, Tracy was finally offered another job by an owner of a local bar who had taken notice of Tracy's string of bad luck and wanted to help turn his life around. He hired Tracy as a dishwasher and even offered to let Tracy live in one of the vacant stock rooms of the bar until he compiled enough money to purchase a home of his own again. By November of 1936, the bar owner began to notice a strange change in Tracy's behavior and mood and informed his other workers to keep an eye on him just in case he attempted to steal again. Finally, on November 23rd, the bar owner's fears were confirmed. As the owner was closing up shop for the evening, counting cash in the register, Tracy emerged from his makeshift bedroom with a handgun, demanding that the owner of the bar hand over the cash. The owner initially refused and questioned Tracy's actions, which proved to be a fatal mistake. Tracy then shot the man, took the money from the register as well as the money from the safe, and fled the state. Police searched for Tracy for the next five years but never found a single trace of him, and he was never seen again. Number 2 A man by the name of Hydra Lacey had a long criminal record and was even noted as being a former boxing champion. Though after his life made a drastic shift, Lacey was convicted for numerous crimes, including sexual battery, false imprisonment, burglary, and grand theft. He is known to have been on the run for quite some time and police tracked him down to his stepmother's home, where Lacey allegedly told her, I'm not going back to jail anymore. 
It was here the police showed up with a warrant, though little did they know that Lacey was hiding in the attic, waiting to attack anyone who entered. For the next several hours, numerous police officers attempted to enter the attic of the home, which resulted in two officers losing their lives. Eventually, a SWAT team had to be called, who then drove into the side of the home to create a secondary entrance into the attic. SWAT teams then flooded the home where the gunfight continued, with Lacey eventually being shot and passing away, though it was never determined whether Lacey was shot by an officer or if he took his own life. Years later, in 2014, Lacey's wife sued police for destruction of property that took place during the attempts to arrest her husband. She did not win the case. Number 1 Dolly Osterich was a housewife who married a fabric manufacturer back in the late 1800s. She remained with her husband Fred for quite some time, though she began an affair with a 17-year-old in 1913 and described him to her friends as a sort of half-brother. As the two's relationship grew more frequent, neighbors began to take note and informed Fred of the possibility that his wife was having an affair. To solve this problem, Dolly suggested that her lover, named Otto, quit his job and move into her attic so that the nosy neighbors would no longer see him entering the hole. Otto agreed and moved in. Eventually, Fred and Dolly made plans to move to Los Angeles, with Dolly ensuring that the new home had an attic so that she could secretly take Otto with her. This plan worked out and Otto remained living in the attic until 1922, when he overheard an extremely heated argument between Dolly and Fred and believed that Dolly was in physical danger. Otto then burst from the attic carrying a handgun and shot Fred three times, with him passing away almost instantly. To cover up the crime, Otto then locked Dolly in a closet and took Fred's money and jewelry to make it look as though the couple had simply been robbed. A short while later, Otto disappeared to Canada, with Dolly being apprehended under the suspicion that she'd been involved in her husband's passing. Eventually, Otto returned to Los Angeles, at which time Dolly's attorney informed officers of his role in the crime. However, by this point, the statute of limitations had expired and Otto could not be charged. Additionally, Dolly was released a short while later after the jury failed to reach a verdict in her trial. She remained in the Los Angeles area until she passed away by natural causes in 1961, with Otto disappearing, never to be heard from again. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep updated with our videos.